Hi everyone and welcome to the first episode of Filtered. This is a daily digital diary that we're going to be releasing uh, everywhere you can get your podcasts at 7am every weekday morning. I'm Megan Cassidy, Managing Director of Love and Media Group, and I'm joined by Jamie Heaslip. And I have to, we just have to address the elephant in the room. Jamie Heaslip has a podcast. <laughs> it's not technically mine, right? So that's, this is, this is the loophole. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and stay elusive on it for a while. Um, it's Lovin's uh, podcast, of which uh, I am a, a, a small little stakeholder. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, like, I mean, but I, I think what we're trying to do here is like any good and any, any podcast out there, just try and give nuggets to people that actionable nuggets that they can take with them um, and, and bring into their kind of daily life or weekly life. Because um, great, great days lead to great weeks, which lead to great months, which lead to great years. And, and hopefully um, that's what we can maybe start people on a journey of. That's it. And what we really want to do is hinge it to a habit that's something that you can do every morning. So I, when I'm doing my makeup in the morning, you've got that 10 minute slot. And I don't think there's enough 10 minute podcasts out there. It's so hard to commit to that longer 35 minutes to an hour and it's broken up. This is a 10 minute really actionable kind of a few insights on something really specific. We're going to try and keep it really laser focused on what the topic is of the day and not too philosophical, uh, not too big picture stuff that, that you can actually action it that day um, after finishing the podcast. So whether it's Especially as well, podcast, because, because if you think about it, the commute's gone mm. for, most, for most of it. So yeah, it's, if anything, you're probably trying to you know, ram that into that 10 minutes where you're, you get to walk out of your house for, you know, 10 minute walk, 15 minute walk and, and, and just something that you can consume. Or like you said, in the morning when you're getting ready, um, when you're getting the hair done or doing the face or doing whatever it is that you do in the morning. Um, and that's hopefully we'll be able to add value to people in that way. Yeah, because so I think it's so important to keep routine at a time like this and anything that you can do to kind of punctuate your day that's regular that happens every day i'm seeing people on instagram the people with kids are the ones that seem to be coping really well when it comes to getting themselves up in the morning the kids have the routine now with getting to school i'm seeing people out doing their walk straight after the kids are in school and um, getting the wash on and it's so um it's so kind of planned and productive whereas when I've got that bit more freedom because I've obviously got no kids it's harder for me to motivate myself to get up stick to the plan you know make sure the feet are under the table by 9 a.m so anything that kind of fosters a routine I think is super important the topic today is really really quite broad <laughs> it's broad even though we're saying we're not being broad <laughs> it is broad but we're going to filter it down um like as the name says we're going to filter it down to what it actually looks like day to day yeah. so yeah. identifying your purpose is something that's hugely topical for people now because everyone's had to go back to the drawing board revisit how they can add value both within their organizations and and if you're leading an organization how your organization adds value whose problems are you solving in this new remote working world um it occurred to me this morning, Jamie, as I was thinking about the topic, you would have had a really big identify your purpose moment when you retired from rugby. So you probably have strategies around how you, how you identified what you were going to do next, like what your strengths were, et cetera. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've been on a bit of a journey. All right. Um, but uh, in terms of like identifying a purpose or a mission, or let's say even a mission for want of a better word, um, cause sometimes they're, they're, they're the same. And one thing for people, like, I don't want to kind of overcomplicate it, just to overcomplicate it. So for me while playing, you know, I kind of a couple of years in, like, even if you literally look at pictures from me playing, like my body composition and shape changed throughout my time playing because of what became my overarching kind of, kind of purpose or mission, which was, um, to leave the Jersey in a better place. And, like what that means is is to me is trying to you know in a metaphor point of view you come into the change room the jersey's on the peg you take it off put it on you play the game and you come back in you put it back on the peg and and hopefully it's in a better place for whoever 
gets the chance to take it up that. And that's, then you end up in, if you start applying that across different things, you end up in a bit of a, a, an infinite game. So there is no finish line essentially. Um, but the purpose is, is why are you doing that? So, so if you think of the mission as is uh, so someone put it's the man in the box. So basically this is going to be quite morbid, but when it's all said and done, and you're in the coffin, okay, what do you want people to be saying about you? Or what, you know, what do you want, what do you want them to be saying about what you achieved? Um, and then why do you want them to say that? Mm. Um, and, and that will start to, those kind of bigger questions will, will help you filter down and get to an answer, essentially. Um, and for me, it is, you know, I, I want to kind of, do better for the next generation in whatever it is I'm doing and, and change, change the uh, expectation around what something is. Yeah. Uh, but that's so lofty. And I think we all have lofty goals yeah. around, you know, what I want to be, what I, the legacy I want to leave behind. How do you filter that? What does that look like day to day? Like, that's a, that's a great question because then you got to fit. Yeah. So how do you, how do you come down the layers? Yeah. So like then, then you can look at your paradigm of, of what, um, what does that mean day to day, which is a lot more fluid than having that overarching kind of mission. And again, it's, you, you, you got to ask the questions of, of, you know, when you think of your paradigm, think of like what's on your shirt. So, so you're walking around with a shirt. What's it, what's kind of, what's it saying to people? And I suppose that, that becomes, um, your theme or your theme song or something like that. Um, and then from that, you can establish, you know, your, your, your guidelines, which could be, think of them like the cogs of a watch, you know, the things that are important to keeping you ticking over, you, you know, you see the, the, the surface of a watch and it looks beautiful and it's all working, but, but what are the big cogs underneath that, that are important to you in your life? So for me, uh, you know, first, you know, it's, it's like family, it's a uh, career, it's, um, uh, health is a, is a big one. Um, and then you got kind of growth, I suppose. And then you got personal goals. So they're kind of like the big ones for me and um, sometimes family and, and I put that into relationships. So it's like friends and stuff like that, but they're the big ones that I know that if something's out of balance, that's where I go to. They're the guidelines as such. And then you, you know, you establish what your values are. A really good way of establishing what your values are is, I go like, what's your values? You might not know, but I was like, okay, what do you hate? Hmm. What do you hate? People, some people are like, oh, I don't hate anything. That's a lot of shit. Someone always hates something, right? Hmm. Um, you'll start seeing, asking yourself those kind of questions. You'll see what you find important to you. Mm-hmm. Um, all those questions from, from, from what we said of being in a coffin to all the way to what do you hate? Those kind of questions will start serving up these answers. Yeah. And I think when we identify what our priorities are, there's a lot of talk about balance and making sure that yeah. you're devoting equal time to, to all of your priorities. But it's not really so much a balance in daily practice. There is a weighing scales and that's okay as long as you are prioritizing the things that are getting you closer to that end point. Um, like, so if I look at, okay, what am I good at? How do I identify my purpose, say, within the organization of loving? Um, you look at what you're good at, what you're passionate about, and what the company needs from you. And when I stepped up to managing director, my talent had been with audience, and I focused too much on the commercial side, and we've talked about that before. And there is what I've now done to make sure that this doesn't happen anymore because you do have to keep the lofty goal in mind, which is I want to solve an audience's problem. I want to curate lifestyle recommendations for the audience. That's the lofty goal. Day to day now, I'm retro calendar blocking so that when I look back on my calendar, I'm, I can see literally by color how I've spent my time that week and whether that reflects my priorities. So instead of planning ahead on the calendar, I retro plan. So I'll sit down at the end of the day and I'll mark out. I actually ended up spending two hours on admin today. So, so I would challenge you in that, Megan, right? Okay. I would challenge you in that. Uh, don't spend too much time. It's called the, wind, the, the windscreen thinking, right? Yeah. So when you're driving a car, you're not looking the whole time in the rear view mirror. Okay. 
um, you're looking at, the, you should be looking at the windscreen, okay? Yeah. And looking at what's in front of you and what's coming down the road. And then glancing every so often to, to where you just came from in the rear view mirror. So I, I would just make sure not to spend too much time looking back and mm. um, take your learnings, take your lessons, but make sure you're applying that to where you're going in the future. Well, you can use that to forward plan. And I think, you know, what's measured is managed. And if I can look and say, right, I know that's such a cliche, but if I can look and say, I spent 70% of my time on admin this week, there's a problem. I need to get someone else to do that because I'm not uniquely qualified to do it. So that's where then I look forward and I say, right, this is how I'm going to fix that. And I think being really open to like not being surrounded by sycophants is really important as well. And I certainly in our company, we're a young company and people will say to me, I think you're spending too much time on this and you're not spending time on, on why and I'll hear that. And I've criticism is great. And you'll go, okay, go home and think about it. If that's true, how can I then block out next week's calendar to make sure I'm not spending time on things that don't get me towards that end goal? Well, a really, really good tool to use a thing called Time Matrix. You know, you just split it up into, into four areas of uh, important, not important, uh, urgent, uh, not urgent. Mm. And um, just kind of box off, like place it where you're spending your time or different tasks or focuses into those boxes. And you very quickly see where, where you have to be, you know. And, you know, you probably have to spend a lot of time ideally in that strategic thinking area, which is, which is important, but not urgent. Mm. But, but then you end up a lot probably in the important and urgent category because of things that pop up. Okay. Mm. But um, there's things that take away that like meetings, you, you know, meetings, calls, and these sort of things where you, that they actually are quite deceptive in mm. terms of being important when they really aren't. Um, but you're right. As long as you are looking back, taking those lessons and applying it going forward, um, you know, that's the only way we'll, we'll, we'll grow. Yeah. I'm seeing people now because people have fa- are faced with adversity that they would have never anticipated doing the things that they were always meant to do, that they're really, really good at because they're kind of starting from ground zero. No one... Making, making sourdough bread, bread, though, I just don't think that was everyone's overarching goal through COVID. <laughs> and people are seeing making sourdough bread, which is lovely. And um, everyone getting on the sea swimming buzz right now, which is great to see because I'm a big sea swimming fan. Yeah. But um, I hope that people have also, because it's been difficult, it's, it's very easy for to say, oh, you should all have time that's follow your passion. That's not necessarily true because mm. we all had to adapt to um, working from home. If you hadn't worked from home already, you had to, um, things like using Zoom or Google Hangouts or Teams or, Mm. whatever the other ones are and there's so many different ones and getting used to that dynamic as well and then getting used to not being around as many people because a lot of people you know but most people a lot of people need to be around communities need to be around their own little tribes and and work is a big part of that for and for that to be away is difficult for people not to be engaging um with people so it it probably taking a lot of time for people to adapt and now, may, now maybe they're kind of thinking, okay, how do, I, how do I use this time better? And I think you touched on it earlier about they're realizing going, okay, if, I, if I'm organized here, I can actually have a really good, I can be effective in work and I can actually get a lot more out for myself and then I can get a good balance with the family and kids or friends, whoever it may be. Yeah, and there is more time now to focus on those things that were more important to you. You've got, you know, your hours of commutes. Although I think we're offsetting that time with the delays on Zoom. Um, I'd say we're losing serious minutes at the end of the month. But yeah, I think you have a good point there. Go easy on yourself as well. It's a really challenging time if you don't know what your greater purpose is. And if this has made you really sit down and and say, right, I don't know what I'm good at. I've lost my job. I don't know what the future is. I think as long as you're asking the right questions of yourself, even if you don't have the answers, you're asking the right questions. What do I love? What am I good at? And what does the customer need at the moment? Um, Jamie, that's us for this morning. That's flown in. Um, if you've enjoyed this episode, make sure that you subscribe everywhere you get your podcasts. We'll be live Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. Um, and we'll see you here tomorrow morning, same time. Take care.